huge welcome in the author's studio to the man with probably the most difficult name to pronounce in the whole of publishing, John Lescois. This guy started life playing in a rock band. Uh, then he got meningitis, he had two hours to live. When he recovered, he decided to completely revisit his life, start all over again, and he became a writer. And not just a writer, one of the most successful writers in North America and around the world. Finish something. <laughs> People who say they want to write, they always come up, they got to, they say I have five, you know, five chapters done of five different books. I go, finish one of them. That'll teach you everything you need to know and then when you're done, you've got a book. It is called The Hunter. It's a Wyatt Hunt story, and Wyatt Hunt goes looking for his, he's an orphaned child, and he goes back as an adult looking to find out uh, what happened to his mother and father. It's about five books ago. I am a very fortunate man. I have a house in downtown Davis that is dedicated to uh, my writing. I have a big office in the front and a kitchen and a bed and everything you need to uh, procrastinate as long as you can and keep away from the dreaded computer that sits there waiting for me and chiding me in the front room. Certainly the most important uh, influence in my life I think is Arthur Conan Doyle because I fell in love with Sherlock Holmes as a really young man. Then I went back and I read all the Nero Wolf books, which are basically the same kind of thing. And then the thing that kind of brought me into the modern world were Elmore Leonard and the, uh, the Deadly Sin books, when I kind of discovered them in my early 20s and said, this is what I gotta be part of. Well, I have to say my guilty pleasure is that I love Grand Marnier, and I drink it at night uh, after dinner sometimes and I find that it, is, it always makes me feel guilty because it's sweet and very alcoholic and uh, I shouldn't probably be you know uh, aware of it as a as a important friend in my life but if you give me Grand Marnier and I make it worse by putting it on the rocks a real American move but that is if I have, if I have to say I have one that's it yes I, I, I do it's a very good question um, I think it's very important to make sure that your socks are sorted correctly. Uh, and so I like to sort my sock drawer before I sit down every day. Sometimes that'll take me six or seven hours and I won't get my writing in, but at least I've sorted my socks. <laughs> well, yes, I did from about eighth grade. I wrote an essay for my eighth grade class and my teacher liked it so much she went to the local newspaper and they published it. And I went, this is so cool. And from then on, I kind of in the back of my mind said, you know, I think I'm gonna be a writer someday. I didn't want to be anything else. And uh, that just kept my interest. And, and I wrote my first book actually right in college. And then right after college, I wrote another one, which I said my, the panel sat in my drawer for 14 years. Probably it was my sock drawer, that's the problem. But then I finally sent it out and that's what uh, got me going. I think Lee Child has made this answer kind of like a cliche, but I don't plan a thing. I sit down, I just try to write interesting scenes and hope they pile up on one another. And I pay attention and watch for the most interesting way to go out for, into the next scene. So it's very unplotted and unplanned. And by the time I'm done, it seems to be very plotted and very planned, and I'm always very surprised of how I got there. But I think that's what surprises my readers as well. So it's a good thing. The question I hate the most is, where do you get your ideas? <laughs> uh, where do I get my ideas? Uh, really, I, really, it's like everyone else. I, I get the ideas from the blood coming out of my head, you know, my forehead when I'm trying to think of them. Uh, I read the paper, I keep up on the news, I keep up on current events, I read lots of books. And every day, if you're a pro, pro writer, you gotta fill the pages. And so I just sit down and, and try to write interesting things, and hopefully some of those ideas make it into the book. Thank you, John. I'm delighted that John has now become the co-president of ITW, International Thrower Writers. At the author's studio, we'd love to hear from any of you 
who've had a life-changing experience, do write it in the comment box below.